Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie and this is episode 3 of the Stitch Magic Knitting Podcast. If you're new here, I am a crafter based in San Francisco who primarily talks about knitting, although other crafts such as sewing or other fiber related arts are sometimes mentioned on this channel as well. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at NatalieRxmCreates and today we are basically just going to be doing a classic knitting podcast where I talk about everything I worked on in the month of November and what my plans are for December slash I guess the rest of the year. So I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Aosta Cardigan by the Knit Pearl Girl. I knit mine in a size extra small, although I didn't really know what gauge was, so some parts of it, especially the sleeves, are very oversized on me. This is knit in We Are Knitters, the Petite Wool in the shade Colorado, and I also have these really cute little like tree trunk looking buttons from a local yarn store in Baltimore. I got this yarn about a week or two before the whole We Are Knitters Zara controversy, and while I don't have a super strong opinion on that, I just personally don't really feel the need to buy from brands like We Are Knitters or Wool in the Gang anymore because I feel like there's a lot of other yarn company alternatives that are cheaper, easier to access, and just in general are yarns I prefer because I feel like the yarns that those two companies and other similar companies offer is often that super bulky unspun yarn, not unspun, but like um, single plied yarn. And I don't really have a use for that in most of the things that I knit anymore. So just in general, my consumption from brands like that have gone down. But anyways, that's just a long way to say that that's the yarn that I used for this cardigan. And it's been getting a lot colder, so it's really nice to have a collection of cozy knits to throw on and keep myself warm while I'm working from home because I feel like my apartment also runs really cold. Like some days I will just step outside and I'm dressed a lot warmer than I should be for even that day because my apartment is so cold and I thought it was that cold outside. Anyways, I digress. But another thing I wanted to mention before I got into what I worked on this month is that I feel like I've been in a bit of a knitting slump. That being said, I actually finished quite a bit of work on my knitting projects this month, all things considered. But yeah, I just wasn't really feeling in the mood to knit this month. I feel like the projects I had, or at least where I was in the projects I had, wasn't motivating me to knit. I feel like also with Thanksgiving being this month and also my boyfriend coming to visit me for two weeks, I was a lot busier than I have been in other months and I didn't have as much downtime for knitting. I also rediscovered my Nintendo Switch, so I was playing some video games this month, but overall I just wasn't as excited to knit as I usually am, but I feel like getting some of these projects knocked off or even finishing up some of my whips in the next month will really be a good motivating factor so I can start the year with a fresh slate. So I just wanted to say that before I get into my uh, finished objects, but my first finished object for the month is a test knit. This was the Granigan Pullover by Ellis Knitwear, and the test for this just finished at the end of November and the pattern was released the 1st of December, so it's out now. I knit a size 2, no mods, and I knit mine with Wool Dreamers Mancha Lopez in the shade Grease. There are multiple grays, I don't know which gray this is because the shop that I bought it from didn't specify, but it's sort of like this mid-toned brownish grayish color and overall I'm happy with how it came out. Compared to the Platulopi, I do like the fabric made by the Manchalopis a little better, it's a little softer and I thought it was easier to work with since the way that that plate is wound it's actually two strands of a super thin fingering weight unspun yarn that basically function as a DK weight when they're held together so that's how I knitted this with those two strands as the plate presents them. This is a seamed sweater and it was my first time doing seaming in a really really long time so I don't think my seaming is that great like if you look at my shoulder seams it's it's pretty obvious where the seam is so it doesn't look that nice but we did what we had to do. I don't think it's super noticeable for the entire the entire piece. And you'll also see that the collar is double knit and this is my first time doing a collar and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out although binding off the collar which uses a Kitchener stitch with the unspun yarn was a total nightmare. It took me, no lie, five hours to bind off this and it's just because the yarn kept breaking every single time I would pull it through. So I could only manage like five to ten 
stitches bound off before I had to rejoin the yarn because it had just completely come apart. So would not recommend doing that. But other than that, I didn't really have a hard time working with the unspun. Um, other design features, this is the first time I've ever done a tubular cast on, so that was a fun skill to learn. I think it looks pretty professional, and it wasn't really even that hard to do. Just made sure I did the double knitting setup rows once I was cast on, and I thought it came out great. Um, one thing to note about the actual pattern, I feel that at least how I knit the arms to my size, they're quite snug. And I'll have a clip of me trying it on, but it basically hugs my arm the entire way up. And I think especially with an unspun yarn, as is recommended for this yarn, it could be a little prickly being that close to your skin. Like, I don't have super sensitive skin and I can wear unspun yarn without anything under it, but compared to my Walpole pullover, which is the other piece I made in an unspun yarn, which has um, a looser fit and drapier sleeves. This one definitely feels a little itchier on my arms because it does hug them so tightly. So if that's not your preference, I would go up one or even two sizes for the arm or just maybe use a different yarn that's not unspun if you want the arms to be more fitted. So that's just my only note on the fit of the garment. Other than that, I made one mistake when I was knitting this. It's not very noticeable, like I honestly don't think it's a big deal at all, but basically the way that the chart is written for the pattern, um, you can see that the knit stitch that goes up the body, like the knit stitches, goes seamlessly into the ribbing here, the ribbing knit stitches, and I have the correct like overall pattern correct for the back, but my um my stitches are offset so it doesn't go seamlessly into the ribbing so that's like the one thing i would say i messed up on the entire pattern but it's not that big of a deal to me i don't think a normal person would really notice it unless they were really looking for it because the overall sweater is just textured and there's a lot of other things to look at but that's the one area where i know that i messed up so i just wanted to mention that but yeah so finished that off and was excited to finish this by the deadline because we were really we were really pushing it to finish between the seaming and working with the unspun yarn and binding off that neck I was just having a really hard time mustering the motivation to finish this but yeah I'm glad I have it in my closet now and I think the unspun yarn is really beautiful, but at the same time, I'm not jumping to join like the unspun yarn fan club. Like I feel like some people really, really love unspun yarn and that's really cool because I do think it has a nice effect, but it's just not worth it to me for how hard it is to work with in some of the finishing details. Um, so if I really feel like there's a project that it would be good for, I might use it again, but overall I'm not like getting first in line for like the nuded and drops or like trying to knit everything out of unspun yarn in the future it's really cool if that's like your thing but i just don't think i have the patience for it or the expertise with it yet and i'm not willing to build it so that's kind of my last thoughts on this but yes my first finished object of the month all right moving on i have one more finished object for this month and it is my gift knit, so I'm so excited I got that out of the way so I don't have to stress about any more deadlines for this year because I really wanted to get this done before Christmas, uh, obviously, so I could give it as a gift. And this is the Hans Holm sweater by Petite Knit. It's one of her men's sweater patterns, and it's just a very basic top-down raglan with short row shaping in the back. Although this is actually the first time I've done a pattern with short row shaping for a raglan, so I mean, I've done a lot of short rows before, not a lot, but I've done short rows before, so it wasn't anything too crazy. But yeah, my first top down raglan with short row shaping. And I knit this in a size small, and the yarn is Thought to Thread, Whiskey and Tobacco in the Persistence DK base. And this is a yarn that my boyfriend, that's who it's for, um, actually picked out himself when we went to a trunk show at Acorn Street Shop up in Seattle, where Tyler was selling a bunch of his yarn. So I've mentioned his yarn before on this channel as well for my Costal tank, but this was yarn specifically that my boyfriend picked out. I wouldn't normally pick this color for myself, not because I think it's ugly, it's just not the kind of color I gravitate towards. So I feel like that's kind of the fun of gift knitting is that 
you can knit something that you wouldn't normally knit for yourself. But yes, so it's a pretty basic sweater, which is what he wanted. It's also a super wash yarn, so I know he'll be able to take care of it fairly easily because a lot of mine are not super washed, so I have to hand wash them. But um, yeah, I guess I honestly feel like there's not really too much to say about this. When my boyfriend was visiting this month, I had him try it on at various points to make sure that it's the right size and I think it's gonna fit him well. It's not really a surprise because A, he was with me when I picked out the yarn and he helped pick out the pattern. And also I really needed the time that he was here um, to work on it. So I couldn't just hide it away for two weeks while he was here because I really needed, I needed that time with it. But I finished the body and one whole sleeve before he left. And I know I'd said in my video that one of my goals was potentially sending him home with it. And I wasn't quite, ab quite able to do that because I had to work on the Groningen pullover test knit. But I actually ended up finishing the second arm just a little while after he left, like two or three days. Because it's just, I mean, it's just one sleeve in the round. It's really fast. And um, overall, really happy with how this came out. Really happy to gift it to him. I think the one thing that I noticed about the yarn is that not all of the skeins were equally variegated so I feel like the top, this top yoke section is a lot stripier than like the rest of the body. Um, so I do feel like there's a bit of a disparity there and I guess I should have alternated skeins if I was worried about that but my boyfriend doesn't mind. He said it looks nice. I don't even think he noticed the extra variegated striping effect. Um, so I think it's just me being a little picky, but it actually also took less skeins than I thought it would take. It only took a little under six skeins. So I think maybe like five and a half because each of the sleeves took less than one skein of yarn, um, which is less than I was expecting. So I actually have one and a half skeins left over and I think I'm gonna try and knit him a matching Oslo hat. I'm not much of a hat wearer myself, but he's been eyeing those like Carhartt beanies and I'm like, no, don't buy that. Let me make you one. So maybe sometime this month or next month, I'll cast that on and I can give it to him because I think he would also get a lot of wear out of that. And I've never knit a beanie, so I would also get to practice some making skills. But yes, that's my second finished object for the month. All right, moving on, let's talk about my whips. I have two whips that I'm carrying over from previous months and then two brand new whips. So the first one, very exciting, is my Moby sweater. Yes, I'm still working on this, but I basically hit the goal that I had for myself in the last month's podcast. So I finished the body. That was my goal um, last month because I wanted to block it and I did. So this is blocked right now. And it actually, um, to kind of refresh y'all on the dilemma I was having last month, I was knitting the body and it was super small because I didn't gauge swatch. And I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to achieve the drop shoulder effect that Petite Knit had because um, in her photos, this moss stitch section was like falling off of the shoulder and that's why doing a straight sleeve with like not that much shaping worked because it was already drop shoulder, but mine was like very tight into my body and I had seen another podcaster say that it didn't really grow that much after blocking and that as a result the sleeves were like very much up on her arm and there was a lot of bunching under the arm which is understandable from a tighter fitting torso so what I had done is I had worked short row shaping on the one sleeve I had done and I just thought the sleeve was really, really big. So what I wanted to do was finish the body and then block it and see if the proportions changed and if it looked okay before working on the second sleeve. So that's what I did. I finished the body and then I blocked it and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I will put a clip of me wearing it, but I think I'm not gonna change this sleeve. Like it actually grew a decent amount in the body, but still not enough that I think I could get away with um, the sleeves that she does just because the amount of positive ease coming off my body is still not that much and plus I don't really want to unwind this entire sleeve and knit it again so I'm just gonna mimic what I did on this sleeve on the second sleeve and I definitely want to finish this by the end of December like that's definitely a goal of mine because I don't want to bring this one into the new year well I want to bring it in as an item I'm wearing but I don't want to be working on this in the new year 
Additionally, I found that the sleeves grew, so I'm actually going to rip back the ribbing and maybe like like one cable's worth here and then re-knit the ribbing. So like maybe to like the middle of this cable, I think I'll rip back because right now it hits me like mid hand. And I know that's very cozy and aesthetic, but it's just not practical for me. Like I'm always running around my sweaters, like I'm doing work and I'm like washing dishes, cooking, whatever. And I need my sleeves to be at a practical length. So I'm gonna rip it back and just make it so it hits me at the bottom of my wrist like a normal sweater. So that is the plan for this one. Sorry, I also jumped right into talking about it. I didn't even mention. It's this knit in one strand of knitting for olive soft silk mohair in the shade putty and one strand of knitting for olive heavy merino in the shade marzipan and I'm knitting an extra small one. I'm really excited to finish it. I think it'll be the perfect thing to wear in the winter because it's like this bone white like snowy vibe color. I'm going home for the holidays this year and home for me is on the east coast where it gets a lot colder than it does in California so I think this would be the perfect thing to bring home and just wear and be super cozy when it's like freezing temperature outside so that's what I want to do with this one. All right, moving on. The next one is one other whip that I've mentioned previously before I get into my new whips. This one, not a ton of exciting updates, so I won't linger on it for long, but these are my boring biker pants. Oops. Boring biker pants. As you can see, I pretty much just knit one more like full skein worth of the leg. So now I've got this second leg is a little bit longer than the first one was. And yeah, I, I pretty much only knit like one ball's worth. Um, but like I mentioned before, this is not a whip I'm rushing to finish. I just have it as like an easy stockinette project I can do from time to time because all of the shaping is just done in the like the top like crotch gusset whatever area and then the legs are just knit straight all the way down until you do a folded hem. So it's just a ton of mindless knitting. It's the kind of thing I can bring to like the movies or if I'm going out and I want a project I don't have to think about too much. So again, not too much progress here, just the amount I was able to get done in a few of the movies that I went to watch. Although I also started working more on my gift knit, the Hemsholm sweater in the movies because that's also stockinette after I finished the yoke. So I needed that to get done more than I need these to get done. Honestly, maybe I'll finish them by like March or April. I'm not in a huge rush. Although obviously it'd be nice to get the yarn out of my stash and that was my primary motivator for even casting them on. But yeah, not too much progress here. I'll probably just give like a little update in each video, but I don't wanna spend that much time on it. And this is knit in a size medium and the yarn is Drops Cotton Merino in the shade black. So now we have two new whips and one of them was fairly unexpected and the other one is one that I've mentioned before as like a potential whip to cast on. But the first new whip I have is this. Oh my god, it looks so tiny on camera. But this is a test knit that I spontaneously signed up for and this is the Another Ribbed Body which is a pattern in testing by Another Knit and I'm knitting the third size. And this, I'm gonna put a picture of the finished item that the designer has, but it's going to be a long sleeve ribbed bodysuit, which I didn't realize it was a bodysuit when I signed up for the test actually, because she just calls it another ribbed body. And I'm actually not sure what country she's from, but I guess body just means bodysuit there, where I was just like, oh, she's just describing how the body looks. But no, it's a bodysuit. So it'll be my first time knitting a bodysuit, and I think in terms of the test she admits that there's like not a ton of grading information out there so it's really helpful for us to have feedback for her on how the bodysuit portion like the part like the bottom part is for her but yes i am just knitting the top now and it looks super tiny but it's in two by two ribs so obviously it stretches a ton and i'm on gauge so it'll be fine but i've knitted the back and then the two front pieces and it's gonna be a v-neck so I still have a few more increase rows to do, but then I'm gonna join the front and then just start knitting it down in the round and then I need to do the sleeves. But this is knit in one strand of Dream in Color yarn smooshy in the shade Petrified Forest. I just bought this at a local yarn shop. And I actually chose this color because it reminds me a lot of a top that my friend in college used to have. And 
I don't even know why I don't think I own anything in this color like this like it's like a super dark green but it almost has like a bluey tinge to it but I don't know I just saw it and I felt like I was really drawn to it and it's just a fingering weight yarn um the original is knit in knitting for olive merino which is a I think it's like a light fingering like it's pretty light so it was hard to find one that was like exactly similar in meterage at the store I went to but this is one that I ended up going with. Um, I bought three skeins of this and I don't think I'll need all three, but we'll see how it goes. And yeah, I'm excited to see how it turns out. Even once I get to the v-neck portion, there's going to be some interesting use of increases and decreases to create the pattern in the front so it's not just like up and down, just straight ribbing. So it will require a little more thought. And I think this is due like in the second or third week of January, but I'll probably bring this home for the holidays and I'll focus a lot of time there on knitting this. So I'm hoping it won't be too hard to complete. Like this I've only been working on for like maybe a week, a week and a half, even though the test started three weeks ago. And a lot of the other people in the test are making really quick progress. Like I think someone is already like doing the bottom bodysuit portion. So it's flying by even though it's on 2.75 millimeter needles like I feel like it's a fairly easy knit I've had my fair share of 2x2 two two rib in the past I'm not afraid of it but yeah that's just something I've been working on for the last little bit my last whip for this month is something I've alluded to wanting to knit by the end of the year before and I actually only cast it on last night and I just wanted something soft and easy to knit and I thought this was a good candidate and I'm sorry it's on a very short cable so I think it's going to be a little hard for you to visualize what it looks like. I know it just looks like a tube but this is actually the Sunday sweater mohair edition and here maybe if I stretch it out on the cable a little you can see I've been working like the yoke increases because it's my first time doing like a more circular yoke and not like a raglan seat like circular like a raglan yoke or just like top down and um, pick up stitches so yeah i'm knitting this in a size extra small and i'm knitting this with this is the frida fuchs duff to lace in the shade hubbards and this is an alpaca silk blend and it's actually thicker than mohair um i think i think it's like 350 or so meters per 100 per per 50 grams yeah per 50 grams so it's thicker than a mohair but I'm holding two strands together right now for the top and I got this yarn when I was traveling this summer I got this at Yarn Over Berlin in Berlin and I think the dyer the hand dyer um they have they sell in other places but I think they are Berlin based so it's pretty cool that I got to pick this up while I was there and I've been wanting to cast on with this for a while I've had it caked up but I just got busy doing like my other tests and like the Moby sweater and like other big projects like that. But yeah, I just cast it on last night. It's a bit of a comfort knit. It's really soft and lovely to knit with. Although I am a little stressed because I definitely don't have enough yarn. I mentioned this in my yarn stash haul video, but I'll say it again here. I only have four skeins of this and I was pretty much going back and forth between whether I should knit it with one strand or two strand because I would have a lot left over if I knit it with one strand. And so this top part is knit with two strands but I'm actually using up the yarn so quickly so I'm pretty nervous about it I really do not think I will have enough so what I'm kind of thinking of doing right now is knitting the yoke portion with two strands and then knitting the rest with one strand we're gonna see how that looks if it looks bad I guess I'll have to rip it back which will also be a nightmare because it's alpaca but I also don't really mind like a more cropped sweater or like shorter sleeves like I know some people really want to embody that fully oversized petite knit look but for me all my pants are high waist so it doesn't really matter if it's shorter um but yeah so I'm having a fun time knitting this this is like literally like less than a day's progress like I cast it on last night and I worked on it last night and I also worked on it a little this morning like last night I finished the neckband and then um, doing the folded over part which by the way also sucked with a fluffy yarn because I could barely see the stitches I was picking up to join it with but yeah I did the entire neckband and then I did like one or two rows of the yoke and then the rest of this I did today because I had a doctor's appointment this morning and when I was waiting in the office and taking the bus there and back I just worked on this and I had a nice conversation with a lady on the bus about what I was knitting 
and she was telling me about things that her mom had knit for her when she was growing up and how she didn't appreciate them enough but she was gonna go dig them out so that was funny but yes we will see how this goes it's knitting up very quickly so I'm hoping to have a good amount of progress by the next video and we will have to see about about if I actually have enough and if my plan will actually look good and work. So yes, that's it for this month. That's everything I started working on this past month or finished this month. And then I guess we can move on to acquisition. So I'm currently in a yarn like no buy, like softly imposed on myself, but I did break it a little this month. So the first yarn that I got, I mentioned for my test knit, um, I left one of them hanked up so that y'all could see, but yes. This is Dream in Color is the dyer, and it's the smooshy yarn, which is a fingering weight, 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and yeah, I just got this at my local yarn store. It looks very, very, like, dark and inky, like, um, in the camera, but yeah, you can see it's like a super dark foresty green. This is Petrified Forest as the shade. And I got three, uh, three skeins of that, and I pretty much bought this because I signed up for that test knit, and I just did it spontaneously, and then I realized I don't have enough quantity of any fingering weight in my stash currently of, like, one color. Like, I just do not have enough of a single color to have knit this, so while I would have preferred to knit something out of stash after I got accepted to the test knit, which I did want to do, I had to go pick that up. Although I think I'm going to try and make it a goal for myself in the future to like not sign up for test knits unless I already have the yarn on hand. And for the most part, I've done a good job of not signing up for test knits actually in general. Like this is the first one I've signed up for in a little while because it was just getting overwhelming having all of the deadlines and not being able to work down my actual stash and buying yarn for the knit instead of being able to use something I already have because I never had like quite enough or quite the right type. So yeah, I think one of my goals probably for next year is gonna be to at least until my yarn stash is down a little bit only sign up for tests that I already have the yarn for but we'll see about that in the future but that is one thing that I bought this month and the other is one that I've been expecting so I didn't technically buy it this month but it is adding to stash this month and it is a yarn pre-order so sorry for any crinkling, but I ordered over the summer from the Sorella Autumn in New York collection. It's my first time ordering from Sorella, and although she's come out with some great collections in the past, I feel like this is the first one that I actually took the plunge for. And I bought sweater quantity of, um, and that's a fingering weight plus a mohair, with the intention of making one project in particular, but I'll talk about that in a second. So the yarn I got, I got four skeins of the classic sock yarn. Let me take one out. So I got four skeins of the classic sock and this is in Waverly Place, which is like a brownie purple color. If you know me, you know I love purple. I love knitting with purple. I love wearing purple. And so when there was like this soft, like light, purple with like a brown tinge that I saw I knew that's the color I'd really want so I got four skeins of this and then I also got four skeins of the matching mohair so this is the mohair and also in Waverly Place so I've got four of each of these and they're gonna go together and I got these to explicitly make the Jenny sweater by Petite Knit now that is a sweater that I've been wanting to make for a really long time, but I feel like last like winter slash early spring when I was knitting, I was very intimidated by it. And then summer came, I was knitting a ton of tank tops. I really didn't have the thought of a single sweater in my mind. So now that we've cycled back to the winter, I think that I'm gonna wanna cast this on maybe in January or February. And this is probably the most expensive sweater I'll have ever made because I don't usually buy like these amounts of hand dyed yarn like I do have like I think a few sweater quantities of hand dyed that I bought while I was on my Europe trip but I've never got like a fingering plus a mohair hand dyed like to use so this will probably be like my most expensive sweater that I've knit but I'm really excited about it I wanted to get a yarn that I knew I was really gonna love because I've been eyeing this sweater for 
almost a year and I'm really excited to make it even though I think it will be a total labor of love in in that being that it's going to take me forever and it's very repetitive and it's Bono of Raglan. So I am excited but I'm not excited to start that but I just know I'm going to love having the finished project when it's done. So that is my second acquisition for this month. So that's pretty much all I've got for, you know, the classic classic podcast categories, but I figured we would just chat a little bit about knitting, about YouTube, about my general life updates. So if you're interested in that, you can stick around. Um, but yeah, I think first I'll just give an update on um, how I'm doing. So if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, um, my main thing right now is that I have a broken ankle, but I'm healing, I'm doing well. I actually just saw the doctor today and they said I no longer have to wear my boots. So this past month, I've basically just been getting off crutches like a little bit week by week with my physical therapist's oversight. And last week or almost, yeah, two weeks ago, I was able to be fully off crutches, but with a boot. And then I went totally crazy because I was like, wow, freedom. And I walked like a mile and a half every single day. And then when my foot started hurting, I was like, wow, why am I in so much pain? And so I really dialed it back this past week and I'm feeling a lot better. And I went into the doctor and they did x-rays and they said that I will be able to not wear the boot if I don't want to. And I'm still gonna wear it for more intensive days, like when I go into the office and whatnot. But overall, like around the house, I'm not wearing it, which is great. And I'm still a little tentative, but it feels a lot better than having to put the boot on every time I want to go like get a glass of water or something so I'm really excited about that and it also means that going home for the holidays I mean I'll bring the boot because it's a good idea to have it but I don't need to wear it around the house there either so that's really great other than that um yeah I went into the office for the first time because Basically, I changed jobs like two weeks before my accident and then I never actually got to go into the office because I was doing remote onboarding and then I had the accident before I was able to go into the office. So I actually went to the office for the first time this past week and it was really exciting because I've been working remotely at home for the past like three or four months and then even before that at my old job, I went in maybe twice a week but none of my coworkers went in so it wasn't like really it wasn't like a classic office experience but yeah I went to the office and it was a really nice change of pace because I do feel like at home I tend to stop being productive more easily than in the office when there's nothing else to do and actually I knit a lot at home during the work day when like when like I can't really actively be doing work so like when there's like camera off meetings or other things that I need to spend time doing or like trainings or whatever. So I knit a lot during those, but I can't knit at work, which is probably good for my work productivity. Um, but I'm still not going in full time, but I think maybe like once a week for the next little while will be just a nice change of scenery for me. And I'm really grateful that I'm in a place now where I have a little more freedom and that's something that I can do. Other than that, I guess, oh yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about my YouTube plans for the rest of the year and moving into next year. So I pretty much have only been doing one video a month, which is the podcast. I know in that first month I got a little overzealous and I also did my yarn stash tour, but the last two months I have wasn't really able to get out a second video, although that was my goal. Like two months ago, I was having issues with like making the vlog look good. And then this past month, it's just been too busy with the holidays, so I wasn't really able to film something. I was thinking of doing like like a winter patterns inspiration type video, but like I just wasn't able to get it together for that. I would like to do a little more content in the future, not this year, which is only one more month, but I think starting next year, maybe doing two videos a month would be my goal. I think for next month, I'm just going or for this month, I guess. I'm only going to release my everything I made in 2022 video because that one is gonna take me forever to film and edit. I plan on, you know, just filming it sitting down like this, but I'm going to put in clips of me wearing everything. And I know some people will just try it on like right in front of you, but like I 
just feel like you get a better idea if I'm like up and moving around with it and wearing like the correct like undergarments in some case um so I'm probably going to film all the clips separately and then insert them into the video while I'm talking about each particular piece so I think that's gonna take a really long time and that will also probably as I mentioned replace the podcast next month because I mean any objects that I finish in the next month will just be included in that video and I think that there's not too much more that I want to talk about for the month there. So the next podcast you'll probably see is going to be at the end of January. Um, and it'll include like any notes I have from both December and January, especially for the items that are not finished by the time I do the everything I made in 2024 video. 2024. Everything I made in 2022 video. I already have a few video ideas that I want to do in the new year. So I'm thinking of like starting the year doing like my 2023 goals so I feel like that would include both techniques and dream patterns that I wanted to make um I think I also have an idea for a video where I talk about like some of the pieces that I want to frog I haven't filmed that yet because I still want to do the everything I made in 2022 as like a comprehensive review of everything I've made so I don't want to frog anything yet but that is one thing I've been thinking of because there are definitely some pieces that I don't love where I could reclaim the yarn and do something else with it I don't know actually if like vlogging is my style like I'm definitely not doing vlogmas as you can tell because I haven't uploaded anything for this month but I just don't think I'm super inclined to vlog like if I'm gonna sit down and knit for a while like my first instinct isn't like oh let me grab my phone so I can like record it and then edit it all together but if like a vlog of a specific pattern is something you'd like to see you can let me know um, like I thought initially that maybe doing a vlog of the Moby would have been fun, but I also was too excited to cast on and didn't want to set up like all of my filming stuff for that or talk about it. So plus I ended up having to work on it pretty slowly. So yeah, I don't know how exciting that would be, but I do love watching other people's vlogs. So if that's the kind of thing you might enjoy, just let me know and we'll see if we can make it happen for one of our patterns next year. Overall, I've been pretty happy doing the YouTube channel. I think it's a nice place to collect my thoughts at the end of each month, even just for myself, even if no one else watches. I feel like I can look back on it and be like, whoa, that's what I was working on at that time. And that's like the kind of considerations I was making for a project in that time. Also, that reminds me that uploading the last YouTube video was a total nightmare. And that's because I'm an idiot and I don't understand anything about filming and I selected 4k for my last video and it took up 20 gigs of storage on my phone and on my iPad and like uploading it took like 20 years and that's why it just I wanted it up like two days earlier but it just did not happen because I was like agonizing over how much time I had spent editing it already and then it just would not upload and my phone was crashing saying it was out of space and then my boyfriend had to explain to me he's like you don't actually like need 4k like you're filming a knitting like no offense but you're like filming a sit down knitting video no one needs to see you in 60 fps with 4k and i was like oh i was just choosing the best settings because i felt like why wouldn't i want the best settings but no i'm actually filming this in hd 30 fps which i think is perfectly fine like i'm not filming a crazy action movie or like something that needs that level of definition um so hopefully i'll have a lot easier of a time uploading this one than the last one but i just thought that was funny um how little i actually know about doing all of this and at the same time i'm learning like bit by bit like every video i feel like i learn something different or get a little faster at editing or do something um that i wouldn't have done before so that's pretty cool that this is also kind of a side hobby that got branched off of knitting one other thing i wanted to talk about was my knitting plans for the rest of the year now i already mentioned a few of my goals sprinkled throughout this video but i think in order i would a like to finish my moby sweater and i hope to do that in the next two weeks it's just one sleeve it's gonna go fast like i have just been procrastinating because i don't want to pick up the stitches and do the short rows again so that's just me being lazy but want to finish the Moby sweater. Want to make good progress on my test knit. It's due like mid to late January. Might take it home with me if I haven't made enough progress before I leave for home, which I leave for home on the 24th, which 
sounds a little crazy because like I guess we celebrate Christmas um, even though we're not very religious but I'm actually taking a red eye and I get in on Christmas morning but the flights to home were ridiculous like all throughout this month it was like $700 to go home and the ticket I got was like 400 so um, thankfully my mom and I aren't super traditional and she was pretty understanding of the fact that I would want a cheaper flight and she encouraged me actually to take this flight so I'm home for two weeks and I think that'll be a good amount of time to focus in on like one or two projects instead of like the four that I usually have going at a time so I think I'll probably end up taking the test knit home because I don't see myself like finishing it or getting very close to finishing it in the next few weeks and maybe I'll take home one other thing like maybe a new cast on like maybe that hat actually that's one thing I could definitely take home when I'm home I'm gonna see my mom and my grandma and I haven't mentioned this before, but I would like to gift knit things for them, maybe for Mother's Day next year. Um, I would have done it sooner, but I think A, I need to measure both of them properly, and B, like, at least for my grandma, she really wanted to more of a say picking out the yarn and the pattern. Like, I don't know if she, like, not in a rude way, but I think she just has her personal tastes and she didn't necessarily trust me to pick out something she would like, like, over the internet. She's also not very tech savvy so it's not like we could have FaceTimed and I could have shown her like we pretty much only do like phone calls and texts if the texts even go through. She has a lot of issues with her phone. Um, so it'll be good to see her in person and we can go through some items and pick them out and maybe even go to like a local yarn shop all the three of us together because I know I mentioned in the first video that I learned how to knit from an after-school knitting club but also that was definitely augmented by my grandma's help. Like I got a knitting kit in first grade and that's what I've been using and then she got me like better needles like they, they had been like a pair of like really cheap wooden needles that like didn't feel very good and she got me like some metal needles which is actually even today still my preferred choice of needles and was teaching me how to do it correctly even though I had been like learning a little bit so I am appreciative to her she used to knit baby hats for babies in the hospital and go volunteer in the hospital and distribute those and she has arthritis now so she can't really knit or crochet because she also used to crochet these really big blankets but I know she's been like really pleased seeing like my work and seeing how far I've come as a knitter so I feel like especially for her it'd be really nice to get her a gift knit for next year so I think that's also something I'd like to plan with them while I'm home for the holidays and yeah hopefully next year I can do a few more gift knits than I have this year because I feel like I wasn't really confident enough in my knitting ability until the last few months to really be like, hey, I can make a garment for another person. Because I feel like if there's a garment and you make a mistake on it for yourself, you can kind of just like tuck it in or hide it and, or if it just doesn't bother you, like don't change it at all. But if I'm gonna be giving something to someone, I really want it to be high quality and I want it to be something that's easy for them to take care of as well. So there's just a lot more considerations and also like, I'm not with my grandma and my mom like most of the year so I can't just like have them try it on like partially way through so I want to just take a lot of measurements understand how they want the garment to fit and then pick out patterns with them and I think it'll be really fun and a good way for us to bond so yes I think those are like my most immediate plans but that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to y'all about today thanks so much for hanging out if you're still here thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in my next one, which should be that big end of your video. And I love watching those, so I'm really excited to film mine for the first time this year. Um, yeah, I finished almost 40 projects this year, which is a lot of projects. I was knitting quite a lot. A lot of tank tops though, so no sleeves. It's understandable. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Um, and until then, goodbye. <laughs>